We're looking again at horizontal circular motion. This time we're looking at banked corners, which when you're on the road and you turn a corner, it, it provides a sort of a steepness at a particular angle in order to uh, make it easier to turn the corner. So let's have a little drawing of a car here. These are the wheels, very roughly speaking. Okay, so it's a little bit hard to tell from my drawing because it's not that great. But this is the this is the back, so uh, maybe we could draw the the boot on it, on it. Uh, and the exhaust pipe under here. Let's draw the exhaust pipe. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> if you're looking, this is a top view. Here's the circle of the um, and the car is on there traveling around the corner. That's our circular motion. This is an exaggerated side view um, of the uh, of the of the slope of the road. Okay, with uh, theta. That's our angle there. Uh, in any case, um, that's what banked corners are. Um, we need to know where the centripetal force comes from if it is turning the circle, so it's going around a curve. It doesn't have to be an actual circle, but it could just be a, um, you know, a, a, a part of a bend like that which has a component which could be um, isolated and considered as circular motion at a particular radius, of course. So um, where does the centripetal force come from? Um, it helps once again to, to look at the, all of the forces acting on this object. I'll redraw um, my car as a block, except it's on an angle. Uh, we should be able, let's redraw it on an angle. Here we go. On an angle. Where are the forces? We've got the force due to gravity still. And um, we've also got a, a normal force uh, coming from the road surface, which is pushing up at an angle. I really should have done that a bit better. Let's just get rid of some of that, there we go, makes it clearer. Um, so uh, for this normal force we might call it Fn or just with a capital N I've seen before, um, that normal force provides uh, two parts, same as before we had two parts with the uh, conical pendulum, we've got the horizontal part and we've got the vertical part, okay the vertical part is balancing out the force due to gravity. We know it has to be balanced because otherwise there would be some acceleration up or down and there is not. Okay, And so that remaining uh, horizontal component that's unbalanced is our centripetal force, the force that is used to, to make it go around the curve, to make the car steer around the curve. And that comes uh, in at the contact with friction in the tyres um, and what we have to do um, is identify that that force exists and one of the little tricks is that people often forget that this is a dynamic um, sort of diagram or it's meant to be a diagram of a dynamic situation if there was no uh, um, if there was no circular motion going on and it was just a static situation with uh, say a car sitting on a hill um, your force due to gravity would exist and um, that would provide uh, also a, um, a component that's going to accelerate it downwards. Um, it's, I'm, I'm not going to try and draw that now because I don't want to get distracted with, with the main thing. Or maybe I'll put an extra video on for that. But um, the equations you're going to have to deal with is the same thing. Fc equals mv squared over r. But the tricky bit, the people that part that people find most difficult, is getting um, your your angle and finding out where that angle fits uh, in your diagram here. So let's just redraw this um, in a slightly different location um, to to help illustrate. So um, we've got I'll put it on a shallower angle so that we we can work with that. That's our angle theta there. And I'm just going to represent our car by a big dot because it's going to be easier. And we'll draw the force diagram. So we've got force due to gravity. We've got the normal force. And um, drawing our little triangle with the dotted bits. These dotted forces are parts of the horizontal and vertical components of our um, normal force. So our normal force would be acting up this way here. And um, if we were to... Uh, kind of show this as a right angle uh, in between here we would find and, and then we follow our geometry of this going through we would find that this angle in here is equal to theta and that this angle in here is also equal to theta 
So if we're um, if we're considering it on our diagram, which is not drawn to scale and all of that, this would be theta here. Okay, and it makes sense that the closer to the closer to flat um, that you get with this, the closer your normal force is equal and opposite to gravity, and the more that this will move up and closer that way, which which means that that angle has to be um, decreasing and decreasing and decreasing, so that that angle there will begin to decrease even more, which would be the same as this angle decreasing. Okay, hopefully that's convinced you. Video has already gone on too long. Um, that'll do.